que é frio do, da Sainte Média. Can you hear me? No, only kept it. I yes, sir. This which was the last sum that we did. Three point two we finish, no three point two. We isosceles we did three thirty sixty ninety we did forty five forty five ninety we did median we did. I think we had to start with the exercise, no. So we are on three point three first. First one, na? Yes, yes. Yeah, one. One two. One two. Three one one. Four five six seven.
Okay, yeah, sorry, I was just occupied. Okay, we'll revise what we did. Uh, first theorem which we did was isosceles triangle theorem. Isosceles triangle theorem says sides which are opposite to congruent angles are congruent to each other. Or if two sides of a triangle are congruent to each other, then the angles opposite to them are also congruent. These were the two yeah, theorems which we did. Then after that, we saw 30, 60, 90 theorem. We did the proof also. 30, 60, 90 theorem says side opposite to 30 yeah, degree to is half of the hypotenuse. Yeah, and yes. side opposite to 60 degree is root 3 upon 2 times the hypotenuse. Clear? Then we did a proof also. So 45, 45, 90 degree theorem says side opposite to 45 degree is 1 upon root 2 times the hypotenuse. Okay, side opposite to 45 degrees, 1 upon root 2 times the hypotenuse. Then we saw what is a median, median and an altitude. These are two different uh, topics, uh, median and altitude. What median does is, median is a line that is joins a vertex to the opposite side. And the median will divide this side into two equal parts. Okay. But altitude, it is a perpendicular line from the vertex to the opposite side and not necessary that altitude will divide the third, the side into two equal parts, okay? This is not necessary into two equal parts. It may not divide. It may or may not, not compulsory, but for median, it is compulsory. It will divide the sides into two equal parts. Clear median and altitude. And then in a right angle triangle, okay, in a right angle to triangle, the length of the median will be half of the hypotenuse. This is what we saw in the theorem. Okay, length of the median is half of the hypotenuse. If hypotenuse is 16, half of 16 is 8. So Length of the median BD will be 8. Clear? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Then we did the proof. So proofs are fine. Did you go through the proof? Yes. Okay. Proofs are important now. We did first sum, the 3.3 first sum. Yes. So we'll do second one. I think second one I had told you to do. Did you do? No? Okay, we'll discuss it. Length of hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is 15. That means this is a right angle triangle and length of this hypotenuse is 15. Find the length of the median. That is BD. We have to find length of BD. And now we just saw that. So the formula. Length of median will be length of yes. Median will be half of hypotenuse, which is AC. So half of 15. And you know what is half of 15. 7.5. <coughs> so length of BD is 7.5. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Write it down.
dance. Okay, third one. In triangle PQR, angle Q is 90 degree. PQ is 12, QR is 5, and QS is a median. You have to find the length of the median. Are you able to do this? Okay, I'll draw the diagram. You'll understand. Look at the diagram. Triangle PQR. They yes, said it is a right angle to triangle. Okay. And at Q, it is 90 degree. So I'll call this P, Q, and R. Length of PQ is 12, length of QR is 5. QS is the median. So draw this. This is QS. This is the median. You have to find the length of QS. We just now saw a theorem that says length of the median is half of the hypotenuse. But in this, length of the hypotenuse is not given only. What will you do then? In a right angled triangle, side of every degree will be half of half of half of but so but but, of but but listen, but uh, 30 degree angle is not given to us. In a right angle triangle, if you want to find the length of the hypotenuse, what do you use? See, length of this side is given and length of this side is given. You need to find length of the hypotenuse. Which theorem do you use in, in uh, right angle triangle? We use one theorem. I don't know. To find the length of the hypotenuse, what do you use? How do you find hypotenuse? Yeah, Pythagoras theorem. Where is the copy of the Marshall? Pythagoras theorem. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, what Pythagoras? Can you use Pythagoras theorem in this triangle and tell me? <coughs> Pythagoras theorem says side one square plus side two square is equal to hypotenuse square. So side one PQ square plus QR square equal to PR square. Understood now? Yes. Can you come? Can you complete this and tell me what is PR? Right, 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 right. So we'll have, have to add the squares and then get the answer, right? And then we'll have yeah. to find the yeah. yeah. You remember no Pythagoras theorem or you want me to do it? Yes, sir. Yes, I remember. Ah. But I was just, oh, I just, oh, I just, I just had that. So in this sum, what is what yeah, they have done? Yeah. Side one is given, side two is given, and hypotenuse is not given. So first you find out the hypotenuse and then you use, use that theorem where median is half of the hypotenuse. Got it? Yes. Then first find out PR and tell me what you get.
So PRS होती है. PRS Yeah, 13. And then median QS. Do that also. So wait, before that, first show me the calculation up to here. Just write there in that first line, you wrote AB square plus BC square, right? Hey, wait, why you wrote AB and BC? Because that... Uh... Because sir, in Pythagoras theorem, it it was like that. No, no, it, it, it depends on the name, no name of the triangle. Name of this triangle is PQ and QR, PQR. So but but just for example, just for example. Uh, no, no, but uh, write it as per the name of the triangle. A B B C. I understand that, but don't get confused in that. Write it as per the name of the triangle. PQ square plus QR square. Equal to PR square. Done, sir. Well, what you did now? That one is not your answer. And uh, now find out the answer. Six point five. Six point. Show me. Now. I didn't do the calculation. Ah, okay. I, okay. I, I write it. I write it. Yeah. 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 Write it. Put them in the mouth and go in the mouth. Yeah. Are they important? Done, sir. Show me how you have written. Perfect. After graduation, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. When I went to mention the name, I did not write that Germania food. I knew only one. That's why they also took it in here. Two mistakes. How much later did they take in there? One year of the Germania. Okay. No, but then afterward, even to more of verify. So one second, sir. Yeah. You have given me.
Yes, I'm back. So. I just read some of it. Okay. In this sum, in the figure, point G is the point of concurrence. Now, what do you mean by point of concurrence? Point of concurrence is the intersection points of all three median. Okay, now in a triangle, you can draw three medians. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. In a triangle, you can draw three median. Now, the intersection points of all these three median, it is called as a point of concurrence or it is also called as a centroid. A point of concurrence or centroid. If GT, that is this length, GT is given 2.5, you have to find length of PG and P. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let's start with the solution. One point to keep in mind. No. The point of concurrence of median of a triangle divides each median in the ratio Two is to one. Okay, so what this says, this point of concurrence, it divides each median in the ratio two is to one. Okay, that means what you can say, this ratio is two is to one ratio. The PG and GT, or you can say PG upon GT is in the ratio two is to one. Did you understand this up to here? Yes, sir. Okay. So what you do now is suppose, suppose the length of PG B, since it is in the ratio, you say PGB 2X and GTB 2X, uh, okay? Since it is in the ratio, so 2X and X, clear? Okay. In the question, GT is given, but length of GT is given. GT is 20, 25, 2.5, 2.5, sorry, 2 GT, GT is given 2.5, but we have taken GT to be X, so X is 2.5. Now, since PG is 2 into X, this will be 2 into 2.5, so 2 into 2.5 is 5. The length of PG we get 5. Clear? PG is 5. 
But what yes, is asked? Sir. What is asked in the question? Coming back to the question, we have to find out PG and PT. So if you look at PT, PT is PG plus GT. Look at the diagram. PT is PG plus GT. PG we just now got five. GT given in the question two point five. So five plus two point five is seven point five. So length of PT is seven point five. Is this clear? Yes. Okay. Write yes, down sir. this. Write down this sum. Go through it and write it down. So, yes, uh, uh, how do we get GT 2.5? Uh, 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 GT 2.5 uh, is given uh, in the question. Yeah, sorry. 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 Sorry.
That was the last sum of that exercise. Uh, let us start with next. That is a perpendicular bisector theorem. What perpendicular bisector theorem says every point This theorem says every point on the perpendicular bisector. First of all, do you remember what is a perpendicular bisector? I'm um, sure is it that when you, you find the middle of the of an angle of a angle in a triangle of a side, side, side. Line. yeah, side, middle. To find the middle oh, yes, point yes, yes, yes. of a side. Okay. So a line, a line that a, or a perpendicular line that divides your segment into two equal parts is called as a perpendicular bisector. That means it is bisecting your segment into two equal parts. And obviously, this will be the midpoint. Perpendicular bisector will give you the midpoint of the segment. Clear? So what this says is that every point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the end points of the segment. That means on this perpendicular bisector, you take a point anywhere. Suppose if I take a point here, okay? So this point will be at equal distance from A and it will be at equal distance from B. Okay, you, so anywhere if you take a point, anywhere you take a point here, this point will be at equal distance from A and B. That means anywhere you take, these two sides will be equal to each other. Is this clear what the theorem says? Yes, sir. Part two is a converse of this theorem. I'll not do the proof for now. The converse says that any point equidistant from the end point of a segment lies on the perpendicular bisector. That means if you take any point, any point, okay, and this point is at equal distance from A and it is an equal distance from B, then we say that this point lies on the perpendicular bisector. Did we get a converse? Converse is opposite of the previous one. Previous theorem it says any point on the perpendicular bisector is equal distance from the end points. Converse says if you take a point which is at a and which is at equal distance from the end point, then that point lies on the perpendicular bisector. Clear? Yes, sir. Then is the angle bisector theorem. You remember what is angle bisector? Perpend yes, sir. What I angle by yes? What I what is an angle bisector? It um we divide the angle in half. Yes, an angle bisector divides angle into two equal halves. 
So usually angle bisectors are ray. Huh? Keep that in mind. Angle bisectors are ray. So if you see in this, in this figure, QS, this QS is an angle bisector to angle PQR. What this theorem says, this theorem says that you take any point on the angle bisector, you take any point on the angle bisector, like for example, this point A, then this point is an equal distance from the sides. That means from point A, if you draw perpendicular to this side, and from point A, you draw perpendicular to the downside, then this distance AB and AC will be equal. This and this will be equal to each other. Do you understand this? Yes, I And same thing with the converse. Same like the perpendicular bisector. If there is a point, any point which is equidistant, from the sides of an angle. That means if this distance and this distance are equal to each other, then this point will lie on the perpendicular bisector. It's just the opposite of that. This, I'll do it as a property, will not do it as a proof, but this is very, very important theorem or a very, very important property. Okay, so what this theorem says, if two sides of a triangle are unequal, if two sides of a triangle are unequal, then the angle opposite to the greater side is greater than the angle opposite to the smaller side. Okay, that means, understand, in triangle XYZ, okay, in triangle XYZ, side XZ, that is this side. XZ is greater than side XY. Okay, side XZ is greater than side XY. Side XZ is greater than side XY.
xz is greater than xy then what is theorem says side angle which is opposite to the greater side so if you see this is the angle which is opposite to the greater side that is xyz will be greater than angle opposite to the smaller side so this is the smaller side and angle opposite to the smaller side is xzy so this opposite to xz is angle xyz opposite to side xy is angle xzy so this angle will be greater than this angle go through it try to grasp it understand it this side is greater than this side angle which is opposite to oh, xz understood. is angle xyz and angle opposite to xy is angle xzy so what it says angle which is opposite to the greater side is greater than the angle opposite to the smaller side understood yes sir make a note of this make a note of this write this into your notebook as note no need to write a statement of the theorem you can just draw this diagram and this Done, Next theorem, what it says? if angle is greater suppose angle b is greater than angle c then the side which is opposite to angle b that is ac will also be greater than c side opposite to angle b is ac side opposite to angle c is ab so side opposite to angle b will be greater than side opposite to angle c which is ab so ac will be greater than ab okay if angle okay if it's angle b, if the angle b is greater than angle c this is this will be given to you then side which is opposite to angle b the so side opposite to angle b is side ac will be greater than side opposite to angle c so side opposite to angle c is ab so ac will be greater than ab now is it clear yes yes sir yes make a note of this
Dancers. Okay, third trying, third uh, next property. What you have to keep in mind is the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. That means any two sides you add of the triangle. Suppose I added side AB and side BC. This sum should be greater than AC. Any two sides here, or you add AB plus AC. This should be greater than BC. Or if you add AC and BC, this should be greater than AB. This is very very important property which you have to keep in mind. Sum of any two sides of a triangle. Is greater than the third side. This is if this happens, then only you can say it is a triangle. If this does not happen, it will not be a triangle. Is this clear? I'll give yes. you one. I'll give you an example which is not a triangle. Suppose you have a triangle of length one centimeters, two centimeters, three centimeters. Huh, okay. Now you add any two sides. Suppose I add one and two. Oh, no. Is this greater than the third side? No, sir. It's equal. No, it's it's equal. It is not greater. So a triangle cannot have these as its sides. If you cannot have a triangle of one, two, and three centimeters like this, it's not possible. Why it is not possible? Because this property says that so, this property says that for it to be a triangle, any two sides you take, any two, it has to be for a, uh, true for any two. You add any two sides that has to be greater than the third side, then it will be a triangle. Otherwise, it will not be a triangle. So, I cannot draw a triangle of length one centimeter, two centimeters, and three centimeters. It is not possible. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Write down this as a note. This entire thing here. Write a statement also.
What is going on in the school? Nothing, nothing. So we had holiday just started this week also. Today also you had holiday? Yes. Till when? Today is the last day, I think. Yeah, today is We'll do the first sum of practice at 3.4 and we'll stop after this. So in this sum it says point A is on the bisector of angle X, Y, Z. Okay, point A lies on the angle bisector of x, y, z. If ax is 2, I mean, if this length is 2, how much will be length of az? Can you tell me how much will it be? Two. It will also two. be 2. Why? By which theorem? A, by angle bisector theorem. Yes, by angle bisector theorem. What does the theorem say? Every point on the bisector is equidistant. Okay, every point on the bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. Therefore, you can say AZ will be equal to AX. AX is 2, so AZ will also be 2 or 2 centimeters. Write it down.
Okay, we'll stop here. What you do is uh, revise all the properties that we have studied till now before the next class on Thursday. Thursday, oh, okay, 10, 10, 10. 10. Okay. So we'll finish this entire exercise 3.4 and 3.5. So we'll finish on Thursday. Okay. okay. See you on Thursday. Bye, sir. Bye.